To get started with the XIM matrix, first go to XIM tech slash support slash downloads. Then you can go to the download page for the XIM matrix. Click go to XIM matrix downloads. You'll have to create an account first with XIM matrix. Once you create an account, you can go into the download page. Here, click on beta. Then go to the top post, which has the newest version of the beta XIM matrix firmware and manager. Here, scroll down and go to XIM matrix beta firmware and XIM matrix beta manager. The beta firmware is to update your XIM matrix device. So first click here to update your XIM matrix device, plug your device into the computer and follow the directions. Then once your XIM matrix is updated, then go down and download the XIM matrix beta manager program for whatever type of device you are using. Once your XIM matrix manager program is downloaded, plug your XIM matrix into your computer with all the components that you want to use with your XIM matrix plugged in to your XIM matrix. Mm -hmm. Then open the XIM matrix manager program. After you open it and configure XIM matrix, at the top of the screen, your devices that are plugged in should show up. In this case, I have a trackball mouse and the Xbox adaptive controller plugged in, so those show up, show up at the top. Now I want to create a new configuration for a specific game. So I'm going to create a profile. To do this, click the three dots in the upper right corner, then click new config. Now you can select a game. It doesn't really matter what specific game you pick. This is just to characterize your specific profile. So I'm going to click Apex Legends, then click what console you want to play on. Once again, it doesn't really matter. This is just so you can characterize it based off of what specific console you're going to play on. This will not program your XIM matrix though. So we'll say I'm playing on the Xbox One. Here is where I actually put in what inputs and outputs I'm using with my XIM matrix. At the top, I can choose what inputs I'm using. The selections are mouse and keyboard, mouse and gamepad, gamepad, or gamepad with smart actions only. In this scenario, I'm using a mouse and a gamepad together since I'm using my trackball mouse with my Xbox adaptive controller. At the bottom, I choose what my output is, and this is what device I'm connecting to. If I'm connecting to an Xbox or PS4, I select this output. PS5, I select this output. Controller connected to a PC, I can select this output. And then if I want it to show up as a mouse and keyboard, as in I can use my Xbox adaptive controller to control my computer, mm -hmm. I can choose this input here. Since I'm using it on the Xbox, I will mm -hmm. choose this output here. Then I click new, and then it'll add the config. Now the configuration is added. Here, I can edit my configuration by clicking the pencil icon in the upper left corner. This allows me to map different functions and adjust different settings. On the first page here, I can change which, what my different aiming sources are. So this allows me to change which control on my controller setup activates the camera movement or right joystick in the game. Right now I have it selected so my mouse movement controls my camera movement, but I can also make it so I can either use the right joystick or the mouse to do the camera movement, or just do the right joystick alone. For now, I will have them both selected so I can use either the right joystick or the mouse movement to move the camera in the game. Then here, I can change what output I'm using, but since I'm using with Xbox, I'll keep it on Xbox or PS4. On the next page, I can change the sensitivity settings of my mouse and my thumbstick. Here I can change how sensitive my mouse is. You may have to adjust this to optimize it for your specific game. I can also change how the mouse will be smooth when I'm playing. And I can also change the response curve as well. And I can also do this for the joystick. This allows me to change the different settings for my camera movement in the game. And on this first page, this will only change it for hip aim. So this is just when I'm not aiming down my sight or holding down the left trigger. So now my sensitivity can be different compared to when I'm in aiming mode. When I'm in aiming mode, I can do the same settings and change the mouse sensitivity and the thumbstick sensitivity so I can change how sensitive the camera movement is 
when I'm aiming down my sight or holding down the L2 button. On the final page, I change my button mappings. In the mappings page, you can remap any button or joystick that's present on your devices that are plugged into the XI matrix to any button or joystick in the game. On the left side is the controls on my controllers plugged in to the XI matrix. And on the right side here are the different bindings or buttons that will activate in the game. By default, when you have a controller plugged in, it'll automatically bind the controls to the typical controls that that controller activates in the game. So for the Xbox adaptive controller, the A button will activate the A button and the B button will activate the B button. If I want to remap any of these inputs, I can click on them or add them. Then I select which input I want to remap. So let's say I want to remap the Xbox A button to the B button. I can do that here. So now the A button is remapped to the B button. So when I press the A button on the Xbox adaptive controller, it'll activate the B button in the game. In addition, I can map so one button, for example the A button, can activate multiple buttons down simultaneously. So if I want the A button when I press it to activate both the A button and the B button at the same time, I can click Smart Actions Editor and I can click two buttons. Now when I press the A button, it'll press the A and B button down simultaneously. The Smart Actions Editor will also allow me to program different button functions in. So, for example, if I'm playing a game that requires me to hold down the button for a prolonged period of time and I have difficulty performing that action, I can program the button to toggle. So now when I press the A button once, it'll toggle or hold down the button for me, and when I press it again, it'll release the button. Now, if I'm playing a game that requires me to repetitively press a button and tap a button frequently in a game to perform a specific action, and I have difficulty performing that action in the game, I can actually program the A button or any other button so when I press it and hold it down, it will repeatedly press the button in the game. To do this, select on the button that you want it to activate, then click the Smart Actions Editor, and slide the bar at the bottom all the way over to the right. Now, when I hold down the A button on my controller, it'll repeatedly tap the A button in the game. If I have a limited number of inputs on my adaptive gaming setup and I want one button to be able to activate two different buttons depending on how long I hold the button down, I can program that as well. So, for example, if I want the A button so when I do a quick tap, it'll activate the A button, I can program that here. So when I rapidly tap the A button, it'll activate the A button on my controller. Then I can add another A button. And this time, I will select it as the B button. And when I hold down the button, it'll activate the B button on the controller. Therefore, depending on how long I hold the button down, whether I tap it quickly or hold it down for a long, prolonged period of time, it'll either activate the A or the B button. Now one input on my adaptive controller setup can activate two different buttons in the game, depending on how long I hold the button down. Using the XIM Matrix app, you can program all of the buttons and joysticks for the device you have plugged into the XIM Matrix and remap them to any control that you want in the game to create a customized setup. If anything isn't mapped in your setup, it'll be automatically mapped to the default control that it typically is on the controller. Therefore, you can go through and remap pretty much anything on your setup to any control that you want in the game. There's also a lot of smart actions that you can also program in, such as programming in combos of buttons, wait times, so you could press a button for a certain amount of time, wait, and then have it press another button. You can also program in stick movement, so certain buttons in your setup can actually be programmed in to toggle walk your player forward or move the different joysticks in different directions. And you can also program them to switch profiles and do other functions in the game. So there's a lot of different things you can program in to your setup using the XIM matrix. Therefore, this can be a very powerful device as it allows you to make certain actions much easier to perform in the game by programming program them in to your setup.
once you've remapped all of your controls and you've adjusted all the settings that you want in your XI matrix program, click save and then you can exit out. And now all of your settings are saved in your XIM matrix. For setting it up with different consoles, follow the instructions on the XIM matrix instructional manual for how to set it up with the different consoles for your gaming setup.